Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how you can create a simple mobile game in only two weeks. But before I do that, let me show you what I made in two weeks. This is actually the first part in the series where I will be taking you through creating awesome Unity mobile games. In the least amount of time, obviously. Making games is exciting, but it's also a lot of work. Create games more quickly when you plan your week and track your time with Week Sweep. Start saving time now and get the app from the link in the description. So it all starts in the menu scene, but this is not really important. But just so you know what I have inside here, you should probably have some game services implement it, where for iOS or for Android, this is a game only for Android as I'm speaking now, but I may release it on iOS as well. So when you are actually on device and you click on these leaderboards, you are going, be, going to be taken to the leaderboards of Google Play Games. I have a tutorial on Google Play Games, so you can check it out by clicking on the card in the corner. And always when there will be something, some concept which needs to be further explained, there will be a card in the corner so you can learn more about that. Then when we come to settings, we have a sound setting where you can turn on or turn off the sound or vibration. And you also have to have the GDPR stupidness for your privacy and also a sign out and sign in button for Google Play games. All right, so that's it for the menu screen. And now let's get into the good stuff, which is the actual gameplay, which you are probably the most interested in. So CoinShake is a really simple game. It's a game concept and the game mechanics are really simple. And when you look at all of the successful mobile games, which are not some MOBAs or RTSs or stuff like that, which is a hard to make by design but when you look at those really successful games they are like match three games simple game mechanic flappy bird simple game mechanic knife hit simple game mechanic most of the games which are on mobile have simple game mechanics it's all in the how you actually implement that game mechanic and how the game looks and how it feels and how it plays that's where you create your users your players for example even crossy road has a really simple game mechanic it's all in the graphics and in the atmosphere actually that's inside the game when you play it so don't be afraid to create something simple but create something simple and awesome if it's awesome, it doesn't matter if it's simple. If people play it, then it's good. So as you can see, the game mechanic of coin shake is, as the name suggests, that you need to shake the coins from the magical piggy. So, but you cannot get caught, right? Oh, I got caught now and I can continue by watching an ad. So this is a test ad. You should always think about monetization when you create your game. And this game is currently monetized solely through ads, but only through ads which actually help you, which are rewarded ads. So everyone loves rewarded ads because you can skip the ad if you don't want to watch it, but you can also continue playing by watching a rewarded ad. This is a test ad, so I will close it and I can continue playing the game without any kind of a problem. And I got caught again, so you see, when I get caught again, I don't have any continuation option, so I have to restart playing. Also, you should be thinking about making this game shareable, so you should include some sharing options. I have a tutorial on Android social sharing, so uh, if you want to check it out, check it out from the card in the corner. And when we restart, we can play again and obviously we can shake the piggy again and it's going to be all cool. And I got caught, I don't have over 30 points, so I don't even have the continuation option. All right, so this is pretty much it from this game, but I will show you some of the core mechanics of how it's actually implemented inside the C-sharp code. So let's get on to it now. 
I always like to have a game instance manager in my games and the main script which is on this game object, the game instance manager, is actually a singleton. When we check it out in the Visual Studio, you can see that it's singleton because it has this awake function which uh, makes sure that there's only one instance present at all times of this mono behavior script. If you want to learn more about singletons, you can do so by clicking on the card in the corner, which is going to take you to my tutorial on singletons. So this is pretty much it. It keeps track of four scripts, scene loader, ad manager, settings manager, and shared sound player. And because these scripts are inside here, and because these scripts are referenced only through game instance manager, and because game instance manager is a singleton, meaning that there is only one instance of it present at all times, these four scripts are implicitly also singletons, because uh, you can get them from by calling the instance of this game instance manager from other parts of the code. You always have to make sure that those four scripts which are referenced through this singleton are also present on the game object. So here they are. And just to make sure that they are on the game object, that they are attached, you should also write something like this. So require component annotation or attribute as they are called in C sharp. And this makes sure that if you don't have, for example, the scene loader script attached on the game object, it's going to throw in compilation error. So this is pretty much it for the game instance manager. There's nothing fancy about this, but when we go to the game scene, this is where the stuff, the good stuff happens. We have a gameplay controller. And by the way, this game is running only through the Unity's UI system through Canvas because it's re a really simple game. I don't need to have any fancy game logic behind the movement or something. So everything can run through Canvas. So here is the piggy inside the Canvas, right? Here he is, Shadow, and the piggy itself is only in the Canvas as an image. And then we have the eyes panel, which we can turn on or turn off the eyes and all of the good stuff like that, or eyes height slider, right? So uh, yeah, but now let's get into the code itself. But before we do that, I just want to tell you that you shouldn't be afraid to use Canvas. If Canvas can help you achieve something in the least amount of time, definitely use them. If it, do if it doesn't have any detriment on your on the playability of your game. So if your game is really simple, like for example, this coin shake is really simple, use Canvas, you don't have to have everything as a game object outside of the Canvas. If you can use Canvas, if it makes you do things more quickly, definitely use whatever you want. In the game scene, besides main camera and the event system, we have only one game object, which is not a child of the canvas. That is a gameplay controller, and this is where the magic happens. It has three scripts, one of which is really long, and it is the gameplay controller. This is the real, like the core game mechanic is implemented inside this game controller, gameplay controller. So let's check it out in Visual Studio. So again, I'm not going to be taking you through all of the code inside gameplay controller, but only through its core functions, methods, however you want to call them. So we have a bunch of fields which are referencing things like the piggy root, game object which is attached to the canvas and the eyes game object because we need to enable or disable the eyes which are showing right so that is pretty simple and we also reference audio clips for the sound to be able to be played and we have a local score then we are later saving the score to the cloud through google play games and if you want to learn how to save the score or any other variable to the cloud from just being this in-game variable into being a cloud variable, check out my tutorial on Google Play Save the Games by clicking on the card in the corner. Then we have a really core property which is is piggy active. 
properties are awesome because you can implement game logic into setting basically fields because properties are fields on steroids. When you set a field, you only set its value to be either true or false when it's a Boolean field. But when you have a property, you can set the value of the backing field as it's called. But then you can also have some custom logic which plays when you set the variable or when you get the variable is piggy active. In this case, I am getting an animator and I am planning an animation to move down and I am also playing a move down sound. So that's all I am doing in here, but you should really be using properties because they are awesome. You can implement your own custom logic to getting and setting the value. And over here we have the long update method. First, we are checking if we should execute update loop, which is a simple Boolean variable field. And if it's not true, we are returning from update because we don't want to do anything inside update when we should not execute it, right? Then we are checking if we have a get mouse button down to be true. And also get mouse button down translates to a touch when you are using a touch screen device like Android or iPhone. So when we touch the screen, we are negating the is piggy active property. So we are switching it from being on to off and from off to on. So we are turning the piggy, we are toggling the piggy, right? And then we are also generating next ice time in the start because we have to have some kind of a value for when we are going to actually show the eyes which are going to catch us. And when it's time to show the eyes which are going to catch us, we said that eyes are in progress for further checking and we generate offsets for eyes for how long the warning triangle should be shown so you can actually have some kind of a time to hide your piggy. And then we also generate how long it's going to take to hide the eyes when you have that like that slider sliding down. So when the eyes are actually looking, how long the eyes will be looking is this eyes height offset. Also, here is a pretty important method on shake, which is called from a script called shake detector. And when we check out the shake detector script, and by the way, this script is also attached on this gameplay controller game object right here. Here is our shake detector. So if we take a look at this shake detector and I have a separate tutorial on that, by the way, so you can check it out by clicking on the card in the corner. But the basic thing that this shake detector does is that obviously it detects shakes. We are checking the acceleration from the input class. So the acceleration of our mobile device. And when it's higher, when it's greater, the, the square magnitude of the acceleration is greater than our shake detection threshold, we are calling this onShake method inside the gameplay controller. And uh, that's pretty much it. This is it, what this shake detector does. And when we come back to gameplay controller, here is the onShake method, which is called from the shake detector. And if the piggy is not active, or if we are not executing update loop, we don't want to shake the piggy because it's disabled basically, right? And if it's not true, so if we can shake the piggy bank, we increment the score and we also make the coin drop animation basically. For the coin drops, I'm using a coin particle system and then we also play one shot of a sound, random sound of the shaking coin sound, right? Inside the piggy. So this coin particle system is really awesome because you can have some variation in the falling coins and you don't have to instantiate game objects because you are only playing a particle system. If we take a look at this particle system, it's right here attached to the Piggy, here it is, coin particle system. And it's really awesome. I, in the emission tab, I have uh, 
disabled rate over time to be so it's zero and the rate over distance is also zero and we have only a burst and this burst plays always when you call this play function play method on the coin particle system so when you call play this burst which bursts out one coin will be played and also make sure that you disable this play on awake so it needs to be disabled here because otherwise you are gonna get one coin dropped when you launch this game scene and you don't want to have that and also make sure that the gravity modifier is set to one because we want these coins to be falling downwards and that's what gravity does it pulls the thing downwards and this is pretty much it for the core of the gameplay of CoinShake. As you can see, it's a really simple game. The whole game mechanic is implemented in a bunch of lines in the update method of the main gameplay controller script. And then there are a bunch of other scripts which simply detect shakes. If you want to play this game CoinShake on your Android phone, you can get it from Google Play by clicking on the link in the video description. If you don't want to miss videos from this series in which I am showing you how to make simple games for mobile platforms in the shortest amount of time, but also how to make those games awesome, but really this is just some kind of an overview, it should be more of an inspiration to you so that you know what is possible. But I also have other tutorials which go more in depth and I also create tutorials while I am making games. For example, from this coin shake, I have a separate tutorial as I've said previously on detecting the shakes of your device. So if you don't want to miss more of these kind of overviews, but also more in-depth tutorials, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are going to be notified about all of my new videos. If this video helped you to understand that it's possible to make awesome games in short time for mobile platforms, give this video a like and also share it so others can know this too. If you want to tell me something, leave it in the comment, follow me on social media, and see you in the next video.